Greetings. The Santana by Joan Didion. In the following presentation, we will observe uh, an interpretive overview of Joan Didion's essay, The Santana. And we will also observe it under the framings uh, of the exemplification genre. So we'll look at it under that particular umbrella. Okay, well, let's begin. Uh, the writer, Joan Didion, she's a very notable American writer and journalist. Uh, I previously read a, a, uh, another of her, um, you know, collective essays. And this, this you know, very concise book, um, it's heavy. It's heavy with a lot of really interesting content. It's entitled El Salvador. Right? And she's written tons of books, but the, the one I read was El Salvador. And it details about the ethical nature, you know, some of the injustices regarding um, the U.S.'s involvement in the South American country of El Salvador. In this particular essay, what makes her more, uh, what, what gives her that sense of credibility, very strong health credibility, is... Um, is the fact that she's a she's living in California, right? She's living in California. I believe she's also a native Californian, and um, she's living and experiencing the occurrences of the Santana upon California, upon L.A., Malibu, you know, uh, um, wherever Joan Didion's setting about. And, and so it, it gives her that sense of not only is she an American writer and journalist, but she's, it gives her that sense of notable credibility because she's not just writing about something very external to her. She's writing about something very, you know, strong health and, and, and you know, something she's, uh, she's experienced beforehand. Right? Um, this essay, uh, we're going to understand it in the framings of the exemplification process. And um, the exemplification genre, as you know by the, by the labeling, right, exemplification, it's in essence an essay that establishes, one, a thesis, a claim, an argument, and within the detailings of that thesi thesis uh, slash claim slash argument, uh, it's being validated and supported by examples, right? You know, examples in the form of, you know, um, um, testimonies, uh, facts, statistics. I, of course, you know, every essay has different forms of examples. Um, I think Joan Didion's examples in this particular essay are very illustrative. And so we'll go over it and then we'll observe the examples um, that she indeed utilizes to 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 establish this claim. Now, the thesis, keep in mind that in, in an exemplification thesis, the thesis has to be argumentative, it has to be, it has to hold a defensive type of nature, right? You know, it has to have um, a detailing <coughs> in which the, the, um, the author um, is trying to persuade, right? But not, not so much, and, and here's what's interesting about the exemplification essay, the the persuasion is not uh, in consideration necessarily of an opposite side, but it's it's persuasive in asserting this point and saying, "Look, here's my argument, and I've got the examples to to prove it to you." Okay. Note that if it's argumentative, it's not factual or informational. If it was, we'd be reading something like in you know I don't know a scientific or environmental, you know, informational um, pamphlet or something, right, or or, or a article or things of the sort. No, it's indeed uh, an argumentative, uh, interesting essay. So let's, let's look at her argument. So her thesis, this is what I'm interpreting as, as Joan Dinian's thesis, and this is, comes at the end of this particular essay. Uh, she says, to live with the Santa Ana is to accept consciously or unconsciously, a deeply mechanistic view of human behavior. Let's, let's break down this thesis statement, right? Um, so, um, obviously, at the core of this essay, the subject is the Santana, right? Uh, of, of, um, and, and in this particular statement, it's, you know, living with the Santana. 
And the point that she's making is that um, to live with the Santana is that one is coming to accept and, and note, note the words consciously or unconsciously, right? It's an acceptance that I'm accepting the Santana, right? A de- uh, the Santana as a deeply mechanistic view of human behavior. So that, that last part of the sense, the, 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 the claim can be a little tricky, but when she says a deeply mechanistic view of human behavior. So as we go through the essay, we're going to observe how the Santana comes in and, and it's like, you know, it's like the end of the world. It's apocalypse, right? Uh, all the de- the interesting details that she gives us. Um, what do you mean I'm to accept this apocalypse, right? Wouldn't it be the opposite? Well, um, the fact that she says it's a deeply mechanistic view of human behavior, it's almost as if she's saying, look, the Santana is going to come and almost like in a machine, it's almost like a button has been pushed. There's nothing re- you can really do about it. Things are going to happen because this is what the Santana imposes upon the life of California, Southern California, right? So that's really interesting, right? That this 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 wind, right? We can almost call it a malevolent wind. Um, it comes in and it seeps into California, and all the madness is occurring, and you simply have to accept it. You know, as as a mechanistic function of human behavior. We're not, we're not, it's that human behavior is not acting via one's own free will, so to speak. But it's because this wind comes in and it imposes the, the, the culture, the society, the way of being in California. It just imposes it to be a certain way. And there's nothing, there's nothing much that can be done about it except survive, protect, right? So this is her argument, right? That the the Santana, when the Santana comes, we simply have to accept it consciously or unconsciously on the notions of a deeply mechanistic view of human behavior. That's that we, we, we as humans, we're going to function like machines. The Santana comes and our buttons are going to be pushed and we're going to function a certain way not because we desire to do so, but because it's the Santana's pushing of our buttons that leads us to do so. Okay. So there's our argument. So now she has to validate this mechanistic view of human behavior, right? She's going to she's gonna show us and illustrate us um, this mad essence of the Santana. So once you have your argument, of course, you're going to have a series of main ideas now. Um, remember, uh, um, you have to have inter- you have to have main ideas to outline certain sections of your essay. So you have your claim, and then your essay is going to have these series of main idea statements, in which you your what, what is it you're going to do? You're going to you're going to see you, you see the statement, and now you're going to say, okay, this particular section, it's going to be about this main idea and this main idea. And this section are going to support the thesis, right? Um, so, so we'll observe that, right? So that's that's the core of a main idea. Okay. Um, what she does, um, she puts she'll put her main idea at interesting sections of the essay, right? You don't necessarily have to put it at the beginning of a of a of a sentence or of a paragraph, rather. Um, but um, her main ideas are interesting. We'll have to look at them, and then we'll, we'll I'll help you break them down. Um, now, the beginning of her essay, her next section, this is a little before we get to her main ideas. Uh, you notice she gives that argument, right? She gives that statement. And so, again, shortly after her introduction, after her uh, thesis, right, she had the beginning, still towards the beginning, um, she's still framing things. She's still framing the, 
the argument. She's still framing that claim about this mechanistic view of human behavior. And she says, you know, I recall being told the Indians would throw themselves into the sea when the bad wind blew. You know, and so you're, you're, you, there, there might be that speculation that here comes the wind and uh, bad, terrible spiritual things perhaps are occurring, right? Uh, um, but that's what she's trying to do, right? She's trying to say, look, it's, it's, it's I'm, I'm, I'm giving you that essence of, of folklore and culture of, of, look, this is what the Indians are doing. Right. This is what the Indians are. Um, they're throwing themselves into the sea when the when the bad wind, when the bad wind blew, so to speak. Or you know, here comes the here comes the the bad wind, and and when it comes in, um, you get meek little wives feeling the edge of the carving knife, and study their husbands' necks. Right. <clears throat> so. I mean, it's, 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 one can see, you know, when this particular time of year and all sorts of terrible things happening, it, it, all, it almost becomes folk, folklorish, right? It almost becomes like an, like an urban myth of sorts. And so she's at the beginning there, right? She's framing things. She still hasn't quite gotten to, I mean, maybe indirectly, right? She's, she still hasn't quite gotten into the, the essence of her examples uh, that are going to validate the sense of, of human behavior as mechanistic, right? That, that we, we are, our sense of being functions like a machine, uh, so to speak. Um, so there's this, the, so there is indeed this covering, this blanketing of, of, um, of belief, when the Santana comes in, and this is what Joan Didion's doing here at the beginning, she's she's detailing these descriptions, you know, and 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 those descriptions almost serve as a type of the opposite perspective. And she's saying, "Look, this is why my argument is an argument, because you know, the Indians jumping into the sea, wives studying their husband necks." Yeah, and my neighbor searching about for hearing things out in the horizon, sort of speak. She says, she wants to say, look, settle down. It, it's bad, yes, but it's not. It's not something, you, you know, uh, beyond understanding of, of uh, you know, of uh, you know, of um, the environment, so to speak. Look, so I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Do away with this folklore essence of sorts. Okay. And the first main idea, I think we would have to argue, it says, look, it turns out to be another of those cases in which science bears out folk wisdom. Oh, okay. So here comes Joan Titkin. She's going to establish that this wind, it's not a sense of evil spirits. It's a sense of science, okay? And so we begin with the examples, the scientific examples. She says, first and foremost, look, it's a fawn wind, right? And it's this fawn wind that comes in. It comes in, you know, it comes in, it actually starts off as a very cold wind, but as it travels and it acquires velocity, you know, very, very fast wind, uh, and it acquires velocity and it, and it, and it, and it, um, sinks into the mountains, acquiring even more velocity, becomes very, very hot. Becomes very, very hot as it enters California, right? And she gives other examples. She says, look, in Austria, they have uh, they have fawn winds in Austria, right? You know, the same thing occurs there. Uh, we have fawn winds in Switzerland, right? In uh, Israel, it's a little bit different. Uh, um, they call it the Hamsin, right? So here are these winds, you know, and, and, and as noted and as exemplified by, you know, Austria and Switzerland and Israel, right? And the Hamsin, you also couldn't know other places like in Egypt and things of the sort. Um, 
it's this wind, and it's and and and, and so it's it's not it's not the evil spirit of sorts, right? It's not that's what's making the air feel very hot or anything like that. No, it's it's Mother Nature. It's it's uh, it's it's an environmental occurrence. So here it comes. And now I'm even going to take it further. Joan Didion does and says, "Look, doctors, they when when they hear when the when the when the um, when he comes in, right?" They hear about headaches and nausea and allergies, about nervousness, about depression. There's something about this wind that makes people feel a certain way, right? Uh, to exemplify and to, and to note the, uh, the dangers of this wind, let's just look at L.A. In L.A., teachers, look, I'm not going to be able to give class because guess what? The students become very unmanageable, right? And, and no matter what we try to do, right, um, we can't because this wind is up in the air and it's affecting our mechanistic functions as human beings. In fact, and sadly, in, in Switzerland, right, you know, suicide rates go up. Um, and similarly, in, in, uh, in Swiss, this particular Swiss, can the, Swiss the regions of the Swiss cantons, all these regions in the Swiss area, um, it's a, one can argue that who's the guilty party in case a crime occurs? It's the wind, right? It's the, it's, it's this fawn wind that's at fault for, for these crimes. You know, it's, it, it actually, lawyers can use it as a mitigating circumstance for crime. It's really interesting, right? So surgeons, right? Surgeons also note that, uh, blood does not clot normally during the Santana. When the temperature is like this, it just it, um, um, the body can't. The body's going to function differently, right? And our our the the our mechanical function. It's terrible that I'm regarding us as machines, right? But our biology, right? It's type kind of mechanistic, right? Our biology is going to function differently. Our blood's not going to clot normally. Um, he al she also refers to a uh, an Israeli physicist who says, "Okay, look, uh, uh, I'm noting how this air it does indeed carry an unusually high ratio of positive to negative ions." So, so you see, up to this point, she's undoing that folklore of this when the Santana comes in. And she's establishing validation for her argument that it's when the Santana comes in, we, we function like machines, right? There's a, there's a mechanistic functioning. And, and so here's another validation of an Israeli physicist who says, the air carries an unusually high ratio of positive to negative ions. And what that does is that an excess makes people unhappy. One that cannot get much more, one cannot get much more mechanistic than that. Okay. So this is her, this is her first section. Um, this is the first part of her, her essay, the first valid series of validations. She's establishing it's a fawn win, given those details using examples elsewhere uh, she's using now uh, you know biological accounts uh, the blood's clotting there's headaches there's depression um, um, you know the reference to this Israeli physicist so there's this section right and now she's going to move on to another another main idea another validation okay so the second main idea is that when this climate comes in, uh, you have this occurrence of two instances. You have, of course, California, commonly you have periods of torrential subtropical rains. But then uh, also throughout the year, you have these 20 scattered days. Santana comes in and you have incendiary dryness, which means fire. So not only not only are we affected mechanically, right, biologically, by this wind, this this very this very hot wind that comes in, we're also affected externally, right? We're also ex affected 
by the impacts this wind has on our environment. So she refers to examples of Malibu. She mentions Malibu, you know, burned in 1956. Bel Air burned in 1961. The Santa Barbara burned in 1964. And she's going to go on and gives us uh, further examples. In 66, 67, um, um, during that time, during that year, 11 men fighting the fire in the San Gabriel Mountains, they died, right? We're impacted by the, by the impact of this wind. Uh, and obviously, what, the most notable impact upon it is, is this notion of death, right? So here comes the wind, you know, the, the, the forests are on fire, the mountains are on fire. We've got to fight that fire. And of course, it's it's dangerous. Cost eleven men their lives. Um, so she so then she says, okay, look, it's let me show you. I want to talk about the environmental, biological. Look at the impacts, and I'm going to talk about particularly not just defining what the Santana is, but particularly that the Santana comes in. There's fire, and that that's bad news on it. So it's a race. Small section, right? And she gives, she gives these um, um, this sense of uh, um, these regions burning on fire, right? She accounts for those examples. The next main idea is she says, so okay, we looked at biological examples, uh, or, or you know, mentionings that it's biology that's impacting us mechanistically. Uh, we're observing how the fire is affecting us mechanistically, and now we're going to observe how that those mechanisms are are you know they're in a state of excess, right? And it, she, this main idea says, just to watch the front page news out of Los Angeles during Santana is to get very close to what it is about the place. So now the fact that she's mentioned the, you know, um, the Los Angeles Times, right, from Page News out of Los Angeles, that means if it's on the news, uh-oh, it's not good, right? So now usually the news will detail quite often, you know, terrible occurrences, but it will also detail crime, so to speak. So let's see what these examples are about when the Santana comes in. Uh, so first she details, you know, in 57, it lasted about, details this account in 57, lasted four days. And in those four days, and when it comes, you know, when it comes to town, you, you're going to get um, a series of, of terrible events, right? On the first day, you know, 25,000 25, acres of the San Gabriel Mountains, um, um, burning, right, with gusts of a hundred a hundred miles per hour. And, you know, you, you think about the the previous four men, sixty six, sixty seven, who, 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 the eleven men who died, right? You know, um, you're dealing with this fire, but the fire is being spread all over the place because this wind is just triggering it all over the place. Um. So this is the occurrence on the first day. Here comes the Santana, and right away, uh, it it gets to do its gets to do its dirty work, so to speak. Um, in addition, right, it's it's not only is it coming in at a hundred hundred miles per hour, right, but it was also noted that it it reached um, force twelve. You know, it's on a Beaufort scale, is a hurricane force. Um, I mean, survival of a hurricane is difficult, you know, as it is. And so imagine being out there attempting to fight a fire with this wind that it's, that, it, that is coming in at a, at a particular hurricane force. It's coming in at a very high velocity. It's also very hot. And on November 22nd, this makes the fire out of control. And if you look at the news yearly, every year, California is always on fire. I mean, you look at the news, you know, the, you, you always hear about the California fires, and it seems like it's a yearly occurrence. 
Um, and unfortunately, it's because this Santana is continuously coming in, right? Um, here comes the here comes the Santana, uh, um, November twenty fourth. Six people were killed in an in automobile accidents, and it's not just that these are just random automobile accidents. It's just that they are associated strongly associated with the Santana. Uh, and so much so that the LA Times was keeping a box score of traffic deaths. My goodness, right? In November 26, a prominent Pasadena attorney, depressed about money, shot and killed himself, his wife, their two sons, and eventually himself. And why Why does Joan Didion give us this detail? Well, she's saying, look, isn't it ironic that this is occurring during the Santana, right? In November 27th, uh, another uh, a Southgate uh, divorcee, 22, murdered and thrown from a moving car. On November 30th, the San Gabriel Met fire was still out of control. The wind in town was blowing 80 miles an hour. And on the first day of December, four people died violently. And then finally, the, the wind began to break. Okay, so so here comes the Santana. All these bad things are occurring, and uh, you know, can they be avoided? So it's almost like as as if Joan didn't saying, "Look, no, they can't." Here comes the Santana. We're gonna have fire. It's just part of the machine. Here comes the Santana. We're gonna have murders. We're gonna have accidents. Just part of the machine, right? It, it's it, it's so when the Santana Kim comes in, you just have to accept that the machine is going to work a certain way and there's nothing you can do about it. You have to accept it. Okay. Um, to conclude, the conclusion, remember, uh, a structuring a conclusion, um, you don't want to restate necessarily the thesis. You can infer it, I would say. I think it's a stronger way to write an essay, All right, maybe a little bit of an inference. But I think, you know, it's the last point you want the reader to leave with. So you either offer a solution or you offer some, some, some sense of advice. And in this particular essay, Joan Didion, and I, and, you know, there is no solution. <laughs> How do you stop the machine, right? Whether it's one's own internal machine, biological machine, or the the external environmental machine, right? And what's going to happen? There is no solution. So she she offers a sense of advice, and she ends her essay as follows. She says, "Los Angeles weather is the weather of catastrophe, of apocalypse. So the violence and the unpredictability of the Santana affect the entire quality of life in Los Angeles." accentuate its impermanence, its, in, its unreliability. The wind shows us how close to the edge we are. It's beautiful writing by Joan Didion, right? You know, of course, this is <laughs> beautiful writing. This is a description of apocalypse, right? But it's just, she's just a master writer. And um, she's saying, look, we just have to accept that when the Santana comes in, be ready. Madness, chaos, catastrophe, apocalypse is going to occur. It's simply the way things are, right? Uh, there in my ellipsis, she was giving a description to New England. You know, in New England, the weather is excessively cold, and so the way of life there, it's a certain way. But here, you know, uh, um, um, it, comparatively, it's the same way, except... It's not about dealing with the bitterness of cold weather. It's about dealing with the buttons that the Santana pushes. Fire, chaos, violence, unpredictability, unmanageability, right? All these many different things. Her advice is just deal with it, right? Accept it. Understand, comprehend that this is just the way things are. It's not about voodoo or urban legends or folk folklore or things of the sort. This is simply the way things are um, when the Santana comes to town. Okay. 
I hope this helps you uh, understand. Um, this is a very interesting essay. I, th I mean, I, I think all of Joan Didion's writings are fascinating. Uh, there's there's a there's a type of almost you know a, like an inferential something something about her essays that makes it makes it really interesting. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed, and thank you, thank you for listening.